Hey guys, thanks for joining us this week. We're gonna be checking out some of these new AMD processors. It's great to test new processors, but you also have to compare them to the last gen. So we did pick up a 5600X, a 5800X, a 5900X, and a 5950X. That way we could get a pretty even comparison with what the current lineup is and see the improvements made currently from this generation, as well as just some other quirks and different. For core counts, they're the same between both generations. They start at six physical cores, go all the way up to 16 physical cores, or subsequently 12 threads to 32 threads. In the same vein as core count, we also have to talk about clock speeds. That's one of the biggest things AMD's improved this generation, is clock speeds. Even though you have the same amount of cores, same amount of threads, they added as much as one gigahertz on their base clock for a lot of these CPUs and 700 to 800 megahertz on your turbo clocks. Pretty significant difference when you combine that with the fact that now AMD has moved to DDR5, you, you get a lot of speed out of that. Weird little things we have noticed though, compared to last generation with the 5000 series and the current generation with the 7000 series is thermal thresholds. 7000 will peak at whatever the top thermal threshold it's going to sit at and try and get you as much performance as possible. doesn't matter what cooling solution you have, whatever. It will just get right to that limiter and run right there. Try and get you as much frequency out of it and just raw performance. Although AMD has added a lot, new, a lot of new features such as DDR5 and now PCIe 5.0 with 28 lanes per CPU. So you get a bit of a boost there with the four extra PCIe lanes running at 5.0, which is significantly faster than 4.0. The prices haven't really changed all that much. The only ones we see that have directly changed is the 5950X to the 7950X. They dropped hundred bucks off the price. Always nice to see a price decrease. Um, 7700X versus 5800X, not direct comparisons, but 450 versus 400. So could be skewed as a little bit of a drop there, but depends on how you look at it. Important thing to note though, is even though the new CPUs are faster, the old ones you can find them used or even new in box, but discounted which could be a better deal if you're looking to upgrade to that generation or you know money's a, a tight budget. On top of a lot of these other new features, one of the biggest things that you may notice from the new AMD CPUs is that they switched over to similar to Intel with their pin design. So now your pins are on your motherboard instead of your CPU. If you've worked with Intel before, not a whole lot different. If you've worked with AMD before, well, now it's a little bit more tedious to make sure your motherboard doesn't get jacked up, but your CPU is a little more durable and doesn't have to worry about bent pins. As for power draw among these CPUs compared to last generation, it's insanely higher. We're seeing as much as double out of the 7950X, you know, 115 watts on the 5950X to 230 on the 7950X, which huge power draw difference comparatively for just one generation. While their advertised bases are one gigahertz higher and their turbos are 700 to 800 me megahertz higher, we're actually starting to kind of see that. You can look at the 5950X versus the 7950X, you're looking at 4.6 gigahertz on the 5950X versus 5.2 on the 7950X. So directly we can see that the increased frequency is there and it's doing a great job of keeping it in that five to 5.2 gigahertz range while under load, all core, which is great to see. Now let's jump into some of our testing numbers. One of the biggest things we saw with TimeSpy was that there was a pretty linear improvement, which we can see in the scores. Your 7950X, you're looking at about near 17,000 in TimeSpy CPU compared to the 5950X 12,000. Super huge improvements here. But when you compare it to the amount of clock speed they give and the thermal throttling that they do where it maxes out the heat, I can see where this would come in. But it's also nice to see that for a same price point product, AMD has improved a lot. On the bottom end of the CPU setup, we don't see as large of a difference in scores. You can look at the 5600X at 8,312 versus the 7600X's 10,186. Pretty significant 25% increase from the 5600X to the 7600X. Not nearly as amazing as the 7950X's near 50% performance increase. Jumping over to Geekbench and Cinebench, we can see a lot more differences in scores compared to the previous generation. The 7950X and Geekbench got 2274 on our single core and 23391 on our multi-core, which is a pretty big boost over the 1738 and 13307 respectively from the 5950X. That's almost double the performance in our multi-core. Single core, probably about 25% faster, which is an extremely significant jump when you consider one generation to the next. Now, jumping over to Cinebench, we do see some sig significant score improvements in the multi-core department uh, from 25,003 on the 5950X to 38,303 on the 7950X. Single core, not so much of a jump, only 300 points difference between the two. 
Jumping into our games tests, you can see that the new generation AMD does really well, actually. Uh, as high as 189.6 average on the 7950X across the board. 0.1% uh, lows, 117. That's really solid compared to the last generation when you look at the 5950X, which is at just under 100.1% lows. So pretty significant improvements there, gonna help smooth everything out and make it look good. But then you get to something like the 7600X, which is maintaining a 106.51% low and 184.8 uh, average compared to its predecessor, the 5600X at 88.7.1% lows and 166.8. So very good job on AMD's part of getting that closer together, smoothing everything out and making it perform a little better. Now into Metro Exodus, again, we're at 1080p, ultra settings on everything, turn off RTX, running it on the 3090 Ti. So should be able to bottleneck the heck out of these CPUs. This one's actually a bit of a weird one. You can kind of see that the bigger core count CPUs, it likes to just kind of dumpster them and put them on the bottom of the pack. Uh, the 7700X actually came out on top in terms of AMD with a 57.6.1% low average and then 150 frames average across the board, which pretty respectable showing all in all considering. But when you jump to something like the 7950X, that jumps down to 51.8.1% lows and 148.8 on the FPS average across the board. Compared to last generation, still pretty solid. You can see that the 5800X led the pack in the previous generation at 49.2.1% lows with 140.3 average. But again, 5600X, not as great of a showing compared to this generation, how the 7600X is starting to kind of get up there and lead the pack a little bit. Goes to show you that if you want to just game and, you know, sit down after work one day, 7600X might be a great option. It's cheap, six core, 12 thread CPU, only 300 bucks. That's not too bad for a CPU these days, especially with the chip shortage. Thanks for checking out this video for AMD's new processors. I hope you maybe found one you liked. You can check it out on our website. We're probably going to have a bunch of them listed up there. I bet you we'll sell at least one of those. If you like the PC in this video, be sure to contact our sales team at sales at avadirect.com or you can head over to our website by clicking on the link in the description below. You can choose from many pre-built options, gaming or workstation based, or use our configurator to build a PC of your dreams. Be sure to click that thumbs up button and subscribe, and don't forget to follow our social media channels at avadirect.com.